chapter 22. Take care of yourself. Another thing that can help you become more confident that might sound pretty obvious, but is also commonly neglected is taking care of yourself. That's right. I know it might sound silly, but taking care of yourself is a simple and effective way to improve your confidence. When you value something, you take care of it. And so by taking care of yourself, you are subtly letting yourself know that you are valuable. Now, what exactly do I mean by taking care of yourself? It will likely vary from person to person, but there should be at least something you do to take care of yourself. Maybe it's brushing your teeth twice a day. Maybe it's dressing up a little nicer. Maybe it's creating a budget. Maybe it's simply allowing yourself to rest. Try to notice if there are any areas of neglect because these can signal where you need to improve on taking care of yourself. If you notice you are constantly fatigued, maybe you need more sleep. If you have a lot of acne, maybe you need to wash your face more often. If you are overweight, maybe you need to eat healthier and begin an exercise routine. There are many things you can do to take care of yourself, but I would suggest beginning where the biggest deficits exist and with the things that are easiest to implement. These are going to be the areas with the most potential for growth and are also going to be the most meaningful for you. Little changes can make a big difference in these areas. For example, if you already go to the gym four times a week for an hour and a half at a time, adding 10 minutes of exercise to your daily routine might not change things that much. However, if you never exercise at all, Adding 10 minutes of exercise per day will create a massive change for you. So start with those areas of your life that have been most neglected. Fitness and nutrition. Since we are on this subject, let's talk about fitness and nutrition. You might think, what in the world do fitness and nutrition have to do with relationships? I came here to learn how to socialize, not get in shape. It's true that fitness and nutrition aren't necessary for having good relationships or social skills. However, that doesn't mean they don't matter at all. It would be unjust of me to say nothing on the subject. There are many benefits to exercising and eating well that will directly translate into more success in your social life. For one, staying fit and eating healthy takes discipline, which will help you grow in virtue. We talked about the virtue of temperance, for example. In order to eat healthy, it will mean denying yourself pleasurable foods for the sake of eating what is going to fuel your body and cause it to work well. That requires temperance. Another virtue we talked about is fortitude, which is the courage to continue under stressful conditions or when something is difficult. Working out is a great way to increase your fortitude because it literally requires you to do something difficult and painful over a long period of time. Staying fit is not something that happens after one workout. You have to do it over and over again without giving up. Hopefully, you can see how both of these practices will increase your virtue, which I have already highlighted as both something essential for having healthy relationships and something that will make you more attractive. Fitness and nutrition are also a one-two combo on increasing your confidence. For one, they will both make you look more attractive. Fit people simply look better. Why is this? We are wired on a biological level to desire people who are more likely to survive and pass on our genes. Physical fitness signals this on a very deep level because it shows that a person is strong and healthy. Back when humans existed in hunter-gatherer societies, that could mean the difference between life or death. People desire things that will increase their chances of survival, and a healthy mate is one of those things. Eating well will assist in creating an attractive physique and give you energy to work out, as well as make your skin look good, which will signal that you are healthy. Exercising regularly 
will help you lose fat, gain muscle, and keep your body strong. When you start to see yourself look better externally, this will increase your confidence internally. This doesn't mean your value comes from looking good. Ultimately, what kind of person you are is what really matters. However, there is an objective increase in attractiveness that comes from looking healthy, and you should know that it exists. Working out and eating healthy will also increase your confidence by showing you that you can do difficult things. As you succeed in these disciplines, you will be reaching new goals repeatedly. When you succeed at one thing repeatedly, it will give you confidence that you can succeed at other things too. Therefore, fitness and nutrition are both great ways to boost your confidence. Again, you don't need either of these things to be a confident person. This book contains plenty of tools for that, which don't require working out or eating healthy. Look at these two things as bonus tools that are also very practical. For example, you might struggle with understanding how to change your thought process because it is more of an intellectual thing. But fitness and nutrition are straightforward physical things you can do and start implementing right away. One person develops their mind, another person develops their body. They both grow in confidence. You don't have to become a bodybuilder or go on a vegan raw food diet. Start with something that's small step in the right direction. Maybe it's just taking a walk around the block every morning. Maybe it's replacing one processed food with a fresh fruit or vegetable. If you are farther along with either of these things, then make it appropriate for where you're at. Eventually, you will get so accustomed to this way of life that it is simply what you do. I have been working out steadily for at least 15 years now. At this point, it's just what I do. Nutrition has been a little more inconsistent for me, but I definitely notice I feel better when I eat healthy. I try to ask myself whether what I eat is going to make me feel better or worse. If you, if you can look at your food as fuel, it makes it easier to make healthy choices. Whether you implement this stuff or not is totally up to you. Just realize that it will make you feel better, increase your confidence, and help you to have better relationships, even if it is in a secondary way. Sleep. One other aspect of taking care of yourself that is extremely important is getting enough sleep. It's something many people seem to struggle with. When a person doesn't get enough sleep, it can lead to all kinds of problems. For example, they won't be able to function at their peak potential, and they won't be able to perform tasks as long as a fully rested person would be able to. Not getting enough sleep can also mess with hormonal balance, anxiety levels, and bodily health. Sleep is where our bodies rest, recover, and heal. During sleep, our muscles repair themselves and our brains process information and experiences. Getting the sleep your body needs might take more time, but it will improve your performance so dramatically that it's well worth it. There are a couple considerations regarding sleep that I will cover here. First, the most important thing is that you get enough sleep. The ideal average amount of human needs is probably around 8 hours though it varies from person to person. Try to figure out the right amount for you to be well rested. You want to get enough sleep without oversleeping. Some people will propose ideas like waking up at 4 a.m. to get an early start on things. This is not necessary. What matters is the amount of sleep you get. If you want to wake up at 4 a.m., that's fine, but you will probably have to go to bed by around 8 p.m. If you'd prefer to go to bed at midnight and wake up at 8 a.m., that works just as well. You're getting the same amount of sleep. Find times that work well for you. Once you find a time, it's important to keep it consistent. You don't want to bounce back and forth from waking up at 4 a.m. and waking up at 8 a.m. Try to get in the routine of going to bed and waking up at the same time every day. Our bodies are set up for rhythmic patterns of sleep. The next consideration is that you want to get good sleep. 
There are different levels of sleep and the deepest ones are important for many of our biological processes. Here are some ways to improve the quality of sleep. First, stay off electronics for at least an hour before you plan on going to bed. The blue light from screens can mess with your brain, causing it to stay in awake mode. On top of that, if you are feeding your mind information right before bed, you may be more likely to keep thinking about that information, which will make it harder to fall asleep. Another thing that can help you sleep better is setting up the environment where you sleep. Make sure it is as dark as possible, set the temperature to something that is comfortable, and keep it quiet if you can. Regarding temperature, cooler is usually better, though you don't want to feel like you are freezing either. Finally, try to avoid caffeine late in the day. All of these strategies should help you get enough sleep and stay well rested. This will improve the performance of your body and mind and cause you to feel better all around. If for some reason you don't get enough sleep from time to time, it can be helpful to take naps if you're able. You probably don't want these to be any longer than 45 minutes. That's enough time to give you a boost without getting into a really deep sleep. Being well rested is super important for staying healthy and having an optimal amount of energy. It will improve your mood and it should make it easier for you to feel confident. Have you ever felt like you just don't fit in? Like there isn't a particular group you belong to. Maybe you feel like you can't quite be yourself with other people and you have to kind of fake it in order to get people to like you. If that's the case, then I'd highly suggest reading my book, Dear 20 Year Old Me, Everything I Wish I Knew About Relationships at Your Age. Now, you don't have to be 20 years old to read it. I just named it that because at 20 years old was about the time in my life where I was the most confused about my identity and what healthy relationships actually look like. Now you can go get this book on my website, www.movingamountain.com slash books. You can order a paperback copy. And I put a lot of work into this, so I do hope to make some money off of it. But I also realize not everyone can afford it right now. So I also made the ebook version available for free. You can literally just go click a button and download it. No strings attached. You don't even have to enter your email. I want to make this available to anyone who needs it so that it truly starts to help people. <laughs>